TV and more specifically, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Watch Talk. It is back on the channel. I made a new purchase, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I will share it with you. And as is customary with these videos, BOTV are doing a giveaway with the same watch brand. And today, that is a Rolex. I'm going to leave all the details below and I'm going to go into it in just a second when I show you what the watch is. But make sure you enter that because tickets start to just pence and you can win a Rolex Daytona. Make sure you get involved in that before you leave the video. But first, let me show you the watch that I've just got. This is the box that it came in. We'll show you some close-ups of that in a second. But this is no modern Rolex. This is a vintage Rolex. So it comes in this uh, rather odd cardboard looking thing with this pattern all over it. It looks like the ice caps, in fact, which is a little bit bizarre. Then you've got a little leather box in here. Very, very small boxes these days. And then just a rather shoddy looking bit of kind of a felt and uh, padding in there. However, the watch isn't in there because the watch is in my rapport watch winder. Ugh, look at this boy. So the watch is in here then. I've had to unplug it and take it over to the, uh, the filming station where we are. But this is the watch then we pinch either side of here. If you want any watch winders, watch boxes, watch pouches, or any watch accessories, make sure you hit the Rapport website below. That will have a code as well, and you get a discount. Make sure you hit that below there and check out what Rapport have to offer, because they are a UK brand, and they're absolutely smashing it, and their stuff is top, top notch. I've got a number of Rapport bits. In my last Rolex collection video, actually, I brought my Rolexes out in a big Rapport presentation box. This has been on a winder to keep it moving, but you can actually select rotations per day, direction, and you start and stop it on there. There's a little LED display on there as well, so loads of different functions. But for now, we're going to take this off. Let's get her off, let's get her off, and we'll go through this watch. As I say, everything I mention, the details will be below. This one is actually made of walnut. Very nice indeed, and you can start and stop it on the back there with a little, uh, little button. As you can see, let's pop that away for now though, but the full details of that are being left below. So then the watch we have here, this is my new purchase, a little bit controversial, and I'm sure some of you are mugging it off already. For those not familiar, this is a Rolex Day Date, and the Rolex Day Date, as the name suggests, was Rolex's first watch that actually told you the day, and shock horror, the date as well. The, the day is at the top of the dial, and the date is underneath the Cyclops there, the little bubble on the side. This is Rolex's first watch, as I say, that had that feature on it, and it was actually introduced in 1956. That is several years before Rolex founder Hans Wildorf. Wilsdorf, Wildorf, Rolex founder. That's a few years before, anyway, that he died. You'll notice off the bat, then, it is made of solid yellow gold. It has what's known as the presidential bracelet, it's got a champagne dial on it as well, and controversially, it's got a diamond markers. Now, I bought this very recently online from a website that many of you will have heard of called Chronex. They're effectively a huge watch retailer selling not just brand new pieces, but also used and vintage stuff as well from across all brands. So I got this from Chronex. Again, I'll leave their website below. If you're really lucky, I'll leave a code which will enable you to get free gift or a discount. So make sure you go and check out the site. There's like Rolex, Bretling, Panerai, Patek, AP, like everything on there. Gerard Perigeu as well. We're going to get onto that very soon. But yeah, I bought this online. Anyway, I was cruising one evening and for some reason, I don't know what spurred me into it. I just saw someone wearing a full gold presidential day date and I thought, that looks rich. Albeit I've already got one. I've got the 1970s Stella dial with the green enamel dial on it. But it's just too rare and too old to wear around the place all the time. I just thought, do you know what? This is cash. It's got diamond factory set diamond markers. Uh, and yeah, I just bought it. So by the time it turned up, I was kind of wondering what on earth I was thinking. But I'm pleased I did it now. The price on it was about £11,000. I can't remember exactly. But for about eleven grand, that's quite a lot of gold and quite a lot of watch. It's an iconic watch. It's obviously a 36mm, not the re-released 40mm. So it wears quite small. But I've been getting into my kind of smaller watches recently. I'm going to put it on the wrist now. And that said, actually, I've got a 37mm Swatch SJC100. It's the Grand Prix from 1993. That's coming off now. Quite a cool tie-in, actually. That's around the same size dial and around the same age. Albeit, it's not 11 grand. It was about 200 quid. But really cool watch, anyway. So, let's put this one on, then. For its age, then... Bracelet stretch, I mean, it's not so bad. This is about 1993, this watch. As you can see, there's a bit of bracelet stretch on there, but it's not so bad. It's nowhere near as bad as my 1970s 
uh, Stella doll. That's pretty. That's pretty bad. It's literally like it's made out of bacon. I'm going to get that restored though at some point. I've been on to uh, London Jewelry Repair. I think it's called. Um, I, I saw him on YouTube a little while ago, and he's going to restore the bracelet. Anyway, on the wrist then, it sits very nicely. As I say, it's a 36 millimeter dial, so it's kind of a smaller vintage vibe. Some women do wear these, uh, but more and more, I think blokes are getting back into the kind of the, the retro smaller dials. I think gone are the days of absolutely enormous watches. And it's quite interesting actually. Oh, here's what I made earlier. Putting this together with my Pepsi GMT, seeing the size differences between the two. Modern watches have just got huge. Even this Pepsi GMT compared to it just looks like almost like a deep sea. And I've got to say at the moment, I don't know if it's just a phase I'm going through, but I quite like the smaller dials. So it's quite cool to put them together. Obviously the Pepsi is from 2020, it's a brand new watch, and this one's from 1993. Quite cool to put them together and assess. Value-wise then, if you think that the Pepsi is a stainless steel sports watch with just a GMT function, and the Day-Day actually has a slight complication to it, albeit not a GMT, but it's full gold, the Day-Day cost me about 11, 11 and a half grand, and the Pepsi GMT, they're actually going for about 14 grand. So you think about it, value for money-wise, Day-Day just looks like such better value. Even the gold alone is worth thousands, probably a load these days. But yeah, quite cool to put those together. And I think it illustrates how the size differences between the two quite well. What I love about the Day Date though is iconic. It's a watch that really has stood the test of time. Rolex is still making the Day Date, albeit they've increased the dial to 40 millimeter, but they are still making it to this day. And it's one of their best selling models. It's instantly recognizable with a presidential bracelet, which sometimes is a good thing, uh, but sometimes can mean that you are, um, you are stabbed. So you need to be a little bit careful of that. If you're in a nice place, then it is really, really cool to have kind of something iconic on the wrist. And the presidential bracelet was actually called presidential um, by, I think it was an American president many moons ago. Was seen wearing one all the time. I think that's the story. Please tell me if that's false in the comments. Get in the comments. You lot know more about watches than I do. But the Day Day over the years really has seen so many different variants. Rolex have made this with so many different dials. There's been wood dials. Tiger dials, the enamel stellar dials, there's linen type dials, there's the onyx dial, lapis dial, there's loads of different dial variants on these. This is just the champagne one, which you can get with or without diamond markers, and you can get Arabic numerals, you can get all sorts. It's really, really cool, and the amount of different variants of the day date is insane. So there are people that just collect day dates alone, just as the standalone collection. I've now got two, uh, but I'm thinking I may well try and get an onyx dial in the future. That's the all black dial. Looks so, so cool. You can, of course, get the date just as well in the same sizes. They look very similar, but of course, they don't have the day at the top of the dial. Rolex also made, to add to the variants, different languages as well. So you can get day dates with Italian writing at the top, German writing at the top, Spanish writing at the top, which also is quite cool, actually. Um, I didn't really mind. I was quite up for having an Italian one or a German one, um, and Chronex have different kind of uh, languages on there as well of day dates. It's random what they've got in at stock on Chronic, so it's really, really worth checking in there every now and again to see what they've got in. As I say, some of them will have box and papers. This one actually came just with the box. There is no papers with it. Um, buying something like Chronix, you know that it's not gonna be fake, so I'm not really bothered about that. Uh, and in time, I'll send this off for a service. I'll get service papers, um, which will add to the value. Full set on these is probably worth maybe a grand, 1500 quid more. Um, on something I'm just gonna wear like this, it's not a kind of super rare collectible piece that I would instantly want papers for. Um, so I'm not that fussed. A lot of people put these on croc straps as well. I'm gonna leave it on the presidential gold bracelet. And as I say, I've got someone in London that actually repairs um, bracelets when they get stretched. It's about 500 pounds a go, so I'm not gonna be too keen to do that. Um, but looked after, this should be absolutely fine. And if you're sat there thinking, I want me a bit of Rolex fun, make sure you enter with BOTB. There are over 50 different watches to win in their lifestyle competition. Tickets start at just 15p, and they range all the way up to 75p. There's loads of different brands to choose from, Rolex, Bretling, Amiga, and all the rest of them, so make sure you hit the lineup to go and see which cool watches are in the competition. And if watches don't float your boat, there's 15k in cash, gadgets, and holidays to win as well. 
The competition does close on Sunday at midnight, so you've got to be quick. You've got to be 16 or over to enter. You've heard that one before. And BUTB, to celebrate this video, have just dropped the super cool, iconic, and incredible, I'm actually quite jealous because I don't have one, Rolex Daytona Cosmograph. That is on the screen. That is now in the lineup for a limited time only. I would love to win it personally, but because I work with BATB, I can't actually enter, so I'm quite jealous. But make sure you do get involved to win that watch for a limited time only. That's going to be in the lineup for a week, and then it's going to go. So make sure you get in the pot with that. And as I always threaten, I may well turn up if you win it. That's worth at least 14k, and as I say, tickets start at just 15p. Get in the pot anyway. The link is in the pinned comment. Now then, I get a lot of questions about security watches and all the rest of it. There is a reason I'm wearing things like this. London has seen a slight spike in watch crime. There's been a lot of watch crime around, bit driving around, people putting a knife in through your car window. It hasn't happened to me, um, but also people following you home from bars. Not a problem at the moment, obviously, people aren't in bars. Uh, but people following you around, putting a knife to you in the street. There's been a lot of watch crime. So that is why most of these watches now, I don't know why I keep buying them, because they just end up being put in a vault most of the time. Every now and again, I'll go and get one out for a special occasion. But at the moment during lockdown, I haven't really been wearing my watches. There's been no point. I've just been out walking the dog and doing very little. So this one for now, I'm gonna to have to take it over to the bank vault. It's just gonna get put away for the time being. And when they are on my wrist, or occasionally whenever I've got one in my apartment, they are insured with First Point. I would really, 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 really recommend you get watch insurance. It just takes the stress out of having a nice watch. You know you can wear it about, and should the worst happen, someone points something uh, sharp at you, you can just hand it over without thinking, there goes half my mortgage deposit. So I'll leave the details for First Point below as well. They also do car insurance. I insure all my cars and my watches with them. They've got brokers and specialists there that can actually pick through it and make sure you get the best cover at the best price with the best people. So watch insurance, I get a million and one questions about it. So that is also covered and I'll leave that below. But they're a really great bunch. Uh, and the guy that owns the company is actually really into his watches. We talk watches the whole time. So um, you can nerd on about it and you can also get them insured. Speaking of values then, what do I think these are going to do? I think that these will probably sit around the same price uh, for quite some time. If you get one that's unpolished, like this one, I think it might have had one half decent polish, uh, judging by the fluted bezel. I think they should hold okay. 10, 11, 12 grand for a 36 mil day date that doesn't have too much bracelet stretch, isn't over polished, has original box and all papers. I think that's gonna be around the going rate. It depends, it's like with all things. If they become a trend, then they may well go back up to 20. If you want a modern one, they're 25 to 30 grand. So value wise, I would say the vintage one's a lot better. And it's also less bling. Because it's such a showy gold kind of flashy watch, I think the smaller size actually suits it better. So in terms of personal taste, I prefer the smaller one, but I'd be interested to hear what you all think. Do you think the small one's too small? I've got quite girly wrists, they're about seven inches. I think then that is all we've got time for in terms of introducing you to the new member of my collection. I really hope you're all staying well, staying safe, uh, staying indoors or staying alert, I think it is now. Uh, who, who actually knows these days what we're supposed to be doing? I hope you're all well. Anyway, I hope lockdown hasn't been too tough on you. I realise it's a really difficult time and I hope you churning some of this nonsense has been of use. For now though, I'm Watch Talk. Thank you so much for watching and do let me know in the comments what you want to see on the channel next. I've made some new purchases recently and I'm going to be sharing them with you regardless whether you like it or not. And if you think this is wider the mark, wait till you see what I've been up to because there are some uh, new brands coming to the channel. Some of you have sussed it occasionally. Uh, you see little bits and bobs on my Instagram and on my YouTube videos. Some of you have sussed what's going on, but there are some pieces as well that you haven't seen. So I'm gonna be introducing those to the channel very, very soon. Once again then, thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I'll see you all very soon. Ciao.